educational and methodical film, spirometry and peak flowmetry methods. Practical work number one, spirometry. Figure shows graphically the relationships among the various loan volumes and capacities. Clinical measurements of specific volumes and capacities provide insights into lung function and the origin of disease processes. Those that provide the greatest information display N. The values for the volumes and capacities given below are typical for a 70 kg male. A spirometer can measure only changes in lung volume. As such, it cannot measure the residual volume, RV, or any capacity containing RV. Thus, TLC and FRC cannot be measured using simple spirometry, and indirect methods must be used. Three common indirect methods are helium dilution, nitrogen washout, and plethysmography. Spirometry is indicated for the following reasons. To diagnose or manage asthma, to detect respiratory disease in patients presenting with symptoms of grizzliness, and to distinguish respiratory from cardiac disease at the cause, to measure bronchial responsiveness in patients suspected of having asthma, to diagnose and differentiate between obstructive lung disease and restructive lung disease, to follow the natural history of disease in respiratory conditions, to assess of impairment from occupational asthma, to identify those at risk for pulmonary barotrauma while scuba diving, to conduct preoperative risk assessment before anesthesia or cardiothoracic surgery, to measure responsive to treatment of conditions which spirometry detects, to diagnose the vocal cord dysfunction, informing the patient about conducting peak flow measurement, collect the patient's information, namely the first name, last name, age and height. For this method, you will need medical alcohol, cotton wool, spirometer and the nose clip. Attach the mouthpiece to the spirometer. Disinfect the spirometer. Ensure that the pointer is at the zero mark on the scale. Conduct the spirometry in a standing position. Put on a nose clip. Took a deep, maximum breath. Made a maximum exhalation through the mouth. Each time retorted the pointer to the zero mark. This diagram shows muscles that work during breathing. Spirometry result is selected the highest result, recorded the correct value in the self-monitoring diary, calculate the appropriate value for the green zone using a table, nomogram or peak flow calculator. Conclusion This study is an important method for diagnosing respiratory system diseases. It allows for the assessment of breathing volumes and rates, as well as identifying disruption in lung function. Practical work number two. Determination of the peak expiratory airflow. Peak flowmetry is the measurement of the peak exhalation rate using special devices, peak flow meters. 
Pigflowmetry is a reliable and objective method for clarification of the diagnosis of bronchial asthma, evaluation of the effectiveness of the treatment, identification of early signs of exacerbation. Due to the wide range of normal values and the high degree of variability, peak flow is not the recommended test to identify asthma. However, it can be useful in some circumstances. A small portion of people with asthma may benefit from regular peak flow monitoring. When monitoring is recommended, it is usually done in addition to reviewing asthma symptoms and frequency of reliable medication use. When peak flow is being monitored regularly, the results may be recorded on a peak flow chart. It is important to use the same peak flow meter every time. For this method, you will need cotton wool, medical alcohol, nose clip, peak flow meter. Informing the patient about conducting peak flow measurement. Attach the mouthpiece to the peak flow meter. Disinfect the peak flow meter. Ensure that the pointer is at the zero mark on the scale. Before performing the peak flowmetry, you need to conduct the peak flowmeter in a standing position. Disinfect peak flowmeter. Put on a nose clip and take a maximum breath. Conduct a peak flow measurement in a standing position. Hold the device horizontally. Took a deep maximum breath. Made three consecutive maximum exhalations through the mouth. Peak flowmetry result is selected the highest result. Recorded the correct value in the self monitoring diary. Calculated the green zone, calculated the yellow zone, and calculated the red zone. Conclusion in this instructional video, we have discussed peak flowmetry as one of the ways to assess the functional state of the respiratory system. The peak flowmetry technique is simple, non-invasive, and accessible for use at home. It allows assessing the volume of exhaled air over a certain period of time and identifying disruption in the respiratory system.